Hey, what's going on guys? I wanted to continue the talk we were having last week about depression, stress, and self-harm. And I'm not going to lie, at first I was a bit hesitant on creating this video because it's just a touchy subject. And But I acknowledged that there is an audience, a demand if you will, for this video. And if I could just help one person, just one person, then I accomplished my goal. And if you could take some positive out of this, then that is more than I could ever wish for. If you aren't familiar with last week's video, basically I asked you guys to submit some questions for a Q&A and I had a couple people ask me how they should go about their stress, their depression, and how they should handle their negative thoughts basically. And I'm glad you reached out. I'm honored, honestly. Uh, uh, reaching out is a great first step on the road to recovery and a strong start makes for a strong finish. So first and foremost, I want to say that regardless of how chaotic your current situation may be, or whatever degree of stress your current life endeavors are bringing you, I want you to understand that I understand you and my heart goes out to you and I can empathize with you because I have been there. I too have felt weak, hopeless, and reached out for someone for help. Now before I continue, I want to properly define depression because it is often the case that people adopt the clinical definition of depression as an absolute and permanent disease they they check online and they're like they read a little bit about depression maybe they go a little further and actually learn a thing or two and basically they go yeah, that's what i have that has to be it there's no way it could be anything else you know my genetics are fucked up i have a chemical and hormonal imbalance in my brain and i am forever damned to be depressed basically they become so attached to this idea that their depression is everlasting and that their depression will be with them forever that they go and reach out and then they get some antidepressants and they're on them for the rest of their life it, it, it's unnecessary and I, and I don't agree with this definition uh, through my experience and through all the books that I have read and all the clinical trials that I have read I know that depression is curable but you have to look at it as a mental it's a mental battlefield basically like you, you take a diabetic for example that diabetic can choose to engage in physical activity or he can choose to be sedentary and if he does choose if he goes one route if he says yeah I'm gonna get better so he goes and engages in physical activity and starts eating healthy he can live a normal life but if he says fuck it and he's like I have this disease and he identifies himself as a disease and he's like there's nothing I can do he's gonna live a shitty life and be fat and ultimately end up dying from something related to diabetes and that's basically the case of depression if you identify yourself as this depressed person then you're gonna be depressed forever but you can get better you, you just can you but you have to have a true desire to get better you can't just sit around and wait for something to come knocking on your door you know you have to knock the fucking door down basically you have to fight for your well-being but the first thing you have to do is you have to detach yourself from what I previously said that bullshit idea that you're gonna be depressed forever cuz you're not depression is a temporary window of extreme sadness basically and it's like the law of seasons if you know Elliot Holes, he's one of the guys that I look up to a lot and he's where I turn to for a source of information and he goes on to explain the idea of suicide as being silly he explains the law of seasons as <clears throat> there's this guy who's freezing fucking cold he is so cold that he wants to take his life he's so cold that he wants to take his life and his friend comes and he reminds him like hey man you know, spring is three weeks away. If you can just hold off for three weeks, the war will come again. And if you look at it that way, then if that guy does commit, then it'd be a mistake. You know, if he could hold, if he could just hold off three more weeks, the war will come again, and the spring will come again, and he'll be fine. But and you could you could apply this to self harm also. If you hurt yourself when the storm is passing by, then basically that means that you never even want a recovery you identified yourself as this sad person and you would rather curse the darkness than to light a candle basically and end up hurting yourself at the end so 
The first thing you have to do is you have to detach yourself from this idea that you're depressed forever. Like if that man who is freezing fucking cold and spring does come and things do get better but if he's so attached to this idea that he's depressed and he won't even feel the warmth he'll, he'll ultimately end up taking his life regardless because he's attached and he's identified himself with this disease so you can't condition your mind this way you cannot brainwash yourself into a rut into a miserable life you have to fight and so you have to stay hopeful guys stay hopeful that you're gonna get better and if you think that way then you are alright guys so now that the noise is gone and you have a better understanding of my perspective of self-harm I want to talk about the easiest way to stick yourself in the rut and actually have depression so I'm not gonna go into detail about my bouts of depression because I don't want to make this a 40 minute video but I will talk about <clears throat> the main idea of the book I read yesterday it's called The Depression Cure by Stephen S. Alardi. and basically the main focus was the process of rumination or what I used to call overthinking and it is repeating the same thing over and over in your head and these thoughts are usually negative and it is the main focus for a good reason and it was the one thing that I noticed among a lot of things but it was the one thing above everything else that stuck me in a rut faster it was a spiral downward with this so tell me this sounds familiar to you because in my high school experience basically I woke up I got ready for school then I went to school and where basically you get told to shut up and be quiet for eight hours. Then I would go home, eat, I would be exhausted from school, fuck school. Then I would take a nap, wake up, play video games or TV or some other activity that doesn't really have any real significance. And it was no wonder I was so damn sad all the time. I had so much time to dwell on negative thoughts that I don't even want to think about it. Like, this was such a shitty time. but. It, it's a serious issue, especially among the sad demographics, and so yeah, so I want to talk about it a little bit here. And here's the thing guys, you can't choose the thoughts that come into your mind, but you can choose to either entertain them or distract yourself from them. Think about it like a, like you're hosting a party or a small get together. Base, first they show up, right? You open the door for them with a smile on your face you let them sit in your living room or in your room <clears throat> maybe you offer them some water microwave some popcorn maybe offer it to them you're, you're lending energy in their direction you're entertaining them so you can take this concept as the thoughts that you embed in your consciousness and mind also you, ha you either entertain the thought you either lend energy in this direction or you distract yourself, right? So imagine a thought comes into your mind and first let it in, you, you have to let it in, hear what it has to say. If it's a positive thought, <laughs> run along with it. Uh, take advantage of the times that you do think upliftingly, basically. And if it's a negative thought on the other hand, let it in, listen to it. Because when something stressful in your life happens, you instinctively ponder and replay that that scenario in your head again and again and your brain gets a bit of insight of how to prevent from having that stressful situation again but if it's a negative thought that is reoccurring and it is passed beyond diminishing returns like if you think about it so much that you already your brain already extracted everything that it needs and you still replay it it's, it's destructive and you'll stick yourself in a rut like I've said before it becomes a redundant and it's destructive to your mental health so don't try to offer this thought the best thing in the house and some popcorn don't let it sit in your mind and grow roots because it'll trigger the, str the stress response center in your brain and it's gonna trigger into overdrive and you're gonna your anxiety is gonna be off the roots the roof and you're gonna be depressed ultimately <clears throat> but these thoughts they're subjective some people think things like like, mm, what if what if my boyfriend is cheating on me you know like my mom did my dad or or you know you're never gonna make that team or your band is never really gonna be anything or you know it's subjective I remember in high school specifically I used to have this same negative thought of where my parents whenever they would go out to eat or something I would always imagine them dying in a car wreck that just giving you a personal one and I had to, it would I would replay it so much in my head that I had to call them and make sure that they were okay. 
Like it got to that point and I'm sure you guys have experienced this also. What we had to understand about negative thoughts is that they're self-imposed, meaning you created them so you can destroy them. And the best way to destroy these thoughts is initially. As soon as they pop into your head, destroy it. So let's say a thought is reoccurring or just a nasty thought that you don't want to think of. Slam the door in his face. Don't even let it in. Just distract yourself from it. And you can't just unthink it. You can't just be like, ooh, this thought, now let me think of something positive. You cannot do that. You have to physically engage in an activity to divert that thought, basically. So you have to steer your mind away from it. And the best way to do so is exercise, you know? Either heavy lifting or deep breathing with yoga. Exercise is proven to cleanse your mind of negative thoughts, basically. But people would rather die than to exercise. So I'm gonna offer you something else. I'm gonna offer you to do something for someone else. That, you ever hear that old saying that it is better to give than to receive? And it's true. There's nothing more satisfying than putting a smile on someone else's face. And you can distract your mind. Like, you'll cleanse your mind from negative thoughts if you do this. So, when something nasty, just nasty pops into your mind, go and wash dishes for your mom. Or go and make a recipe that your dad will like. You know, learn something. <clears throat> what I like to do when I'm wrapped inside my mind and trapped inside my mind, I like to go and buy my girlfriend food that she really likes. So. I show up at a door with food or I'll take her to Chipotle and she has a smile on her face and I I feel great like there is there's nothing better I'm, I'm satisfied and it's liberating and you're free yourself from your mind and I wish I could go into more details about different things of depression and whatnot but there's just no time so the best thing I can offer you right now guys is that when you are trapped inside your head and you can't get the destructive voices and thoughts out of your mind just get up and do something for someone else and if and always always remember that you will not be sad forever and if you can keep that mentality then you will recover and you will have a better life so that's it guys good luck on your road and your journey to enlightenment that's it thank you